outreach time. So we have Pastor Casey Bean from Bellflower, California. And he's a pastor here on Red's Room um, and also at uh, Way Out Ministries. Should I ask you a funny question too, or are we just going to jump right in? Yeah, I had a sense of humor. <laughs> okay. If you had to wear a bathing suit or a snowsuit for the rest of your life, which one would you wear? Oh, come on now. <laughs> I, I, would, I would wear a bathing suit under a snowsuit. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, there's always a loophole. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's All always right. on what the weather is. That's that's the conundrum. <laughs> that's it. No problem with the bathing suit. I'm going to the beach tomorrow. I'll be wearing a bathing suit. Nice. Yeah. Red says you're from California, of course. Like sure, sure shorts. It's it's a staple, right? That's right. Yep. You gotta be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pastor not, Casey. Not so much for the, not so much so for the snow. <laughs> not, no, not well, so but but then you, but then you'll get numb real quick, and then and then it won't matter. Yeah, not in Southern California. We don't have that problem. <laughs> Very true. Oh. All right, what is the Lord giving you for us tonight? All right, thank you. Mm. Okay, well, what what the Lord has put on my heart to to share with you guys today comes from Hebrews chapter eleven. And um, for those of us that know the Bible, um, when I first started learning the Bible, we went we we went through Hebrews chapter eleven, and it, and we it was referred to as the Hall of Faith. It has has a lot of uh, people in here who um, through faith, um, they they were pleasing to God, as as the Bible says, without faith it, it is impossible to please God. I want to look at this and we want to be pleasing to God, right? Okay, let's see what we got here. Well, I know I do. Okay, well, anyway, let's pray first. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that wonderful music, worship music we got to listen to, all those uh, wonderful artists, originals, and, and uh, Lord, we're so thankful that um, we're able to Listen to that beautiful music that people from people's hearts, Lord. I ask a blessing upon tonight's study. Anybody out there that's listening that needs to hear these words, Lord, from you about faith, Lord, I pray that it's able to touch their hearts and that you would reach out to them, Lord, and that they would reach back and that they would come to faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, it's um, from Hebrews chapter 11 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good testimony by faith we understand that the worlds were fra framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible right and um I have to say that I, I think most people believe in God, that they believe that there is a God that created the heavens and the earth. So they do have a form of faith when they when they at least believe that much. <clears throat> All right, let's move on. Verse four. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. So even though he's been, even though he's dead, he still speaks. That's how God sees when when people pass away that um they're they're still alive. And that, that gives comfort to those of us that have lost loved ones. I am a widower, and I know my wife is, is with the Lord, and I know that she still lives. And that she's with him. Okay. So I wanted to look at that about Cain and Abel. 
And that's in uh, Genesis chapter 4. But Cain murders Abel. It says, now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. And she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And his desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? He said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. Now, so so after he killed his, his own brother, and it says that his blood cries out to God, that God God can hear his blood crying. Even though he was dead, his blood was still speaking. Now, not only that, but in verse 11, it says, so now you are cursed from the earth. You a curse that God, God pronounced a curse on him, which is a, a terrible, horrible thing to happen because of this sin. Now, I often often told people I said that sin. You know, when when I when I was young, um, if I got caught smoking cigarettes, you know what the older people would say? They would say that that'll stunt your growth. Well, you know that's what sin does to us. Also, sin will stunt your growth. It will it will stunt your spiritual growth. So there's there are consequences to our sin. Says, so now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. So those are the consequences that, that Cain had to en endure after committing such a sin against his own brother. Okay, now I want to go back and look at um back to Hebrews eleven and read verse seven. Talking about faith. Now it's by faith Noah being divine, divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith the righteousness which is according to faith so this is about noah so i wanted to look back in in genesis also about noah Says here about the, the wickedness and judgment of man. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, 
that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves to all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continu continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. Its width, 50 cubits. Its height, 30 cubits. Thus Noah did, Noah did according to all that God had commanded him. So God told him how to make this ark and what to do, how, how he was to, to um, make enough room in there for all the animals that were he was going to send to him. He was going to send all these animals two by two to, to Noah, but there were certain other animals that he was supposed to put on, on there also. There was supposed to be enough provision for him, him and his family to survive that great flood that was coming upon the earth to kill all, destroy all life on the face of the earth. And so Noah um, built the ark and did as God had told him. And him, him and his family, the, fa the flood came and him and his family got on board and they had survived the flood. And they had lived off all the supplies that were on, on board the, the ark. All the animals, he had all kinds of food on there that he was able to survive. And then after, a, after an amount of time, the ark finally came upon dry land. After the, after the, the rain had have, uh, subsided, the ark landed on dry land, and Noah and his family came out, and all the animals, and they were to um, go everywhere upon the, the earth, and, and multiply him, his family, and, and all the animals were to do so. Now it says says here what, what Noah did when he first when when he first got out of the, the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. And the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, see time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, 
and day and night shall not cease. So as soon as Noah got out of the ark on the dry land, after all that rain, the flood, which was the judgment of, from God upon man, after that, he, he got out and he built an altar and, and, and sacrificed on there. And that was a God-honoring thing that he had done. And it pleased the Lord. Now, from, from that time on from, and throughout the Old Testament, we find that it was required of people to offer um, animal sacrifices for the remissions of sin. I, I know people, people they, they, they think, oh, that's kind of odd that they would, um, that God would require animal sacrifice to, for the forgiveness of their sin. Actually, it was a, it was not actually a forgiveness of sin. It was a covering of their sin. People think that that's kind of odd, you know. Why would God do that? Well, the thing is, see, when when I was a, when I was young, if if I did something wrong, my, like my mom would probably tell me, pick up, pick up your toys, you know, or 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 maybe later on she'd say, clean up your room. And then when I got a little older and I did something wrong, which of course I did, I ended up having to say, they would say to me, mow the lawn. I had I had to do something. You know, I had done something wrong, and that was their condition. Was that I do something like that to to clean my room or mow my lawn. My lawn, my lawn was my my grass never grew too much <laughs> when I was a kid. But um Anyways, you see, the Bible says that all sin is sin against God. So it's only right that that sin being against God, that he would come up with the way, he would make that way, he would come up with the way that we could be forgiven by him. And if he says that there must be an animal sacrifice, then animal sacrifice it is. That was his requirement. And it was his plan all along. That there must be a sacrifice. I'm going to look at um, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. It says, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So they they when when they when they made a a sacrifice in in the temple, on the altar, they would take of that blood and they would sprinkle it around. They would start sprinkling it on everything, all the utensils in the temple that they used for the sacrifices. They would they would sprinkle it around, and that God had considered that was what was cleansing the the temple. Or cleansing the people. They would sprinkle that blood around. And that was his requirement. So that's what they did. I'm going to look at uh, 1 John chapter 2. I'm going to change my Bible. My trusty NIV. <laughs> okay. Um, 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. It says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So this is speaking of Jesus, that when he died on the cross, it was not just any any old kind of uh, um, death on the cross. They, they would say that he died a the death of a of of the the thief or or something like that. You know, he he had broken the Roman law, so he. He, he died he died the death of a thief 
but he didn't. Actually, it was a sacrificial death is what it was. It was arranged by God, God the Father, who had given his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So this was the plan all along, that Jesus would become our sacrifice. So this is there, there's nothing that we have to do that we could do, because this is something that's already been done. It's already been done for us. Just like all these other things that have been done thousands of years already. But we, we all we can do is believe it by faith. Just like we believe that the, the, the heavens and the earth were created by God. We need to um, believe, have a believing faith that, that Jesus was sacrificed for the sins of the world. For our personally, for each one of us, each one of our sins. Uh, now I want to look at um, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. It says, So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. For those who are waiting, that's us. That We are the born-again Christians. We're the ones that are waiting. For him to return. Come come quickly, Lord. Are you waiting for him to appear? I am. And we do these things by faith. We need to have this faith in Christ that he is coming for us again. Okay, where am I? Oh, I'm going to go to 2 Peter chapter 3. Starting with verse 3. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth were reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. And so by, by this, we believe that the next time that, that God destroys the earth is going to be by fire. But what? But even more so that we know about is that about the the lake of fire, which which would be more put it more more um, easily for us to understand is is hell. We don't want to go to hell. We we need to have that faith that Jesus is our sacrifice. No, I, I, I do evangelism on Saturdays at the beach. That's where I'm going tomorrow. And and um, we would ask somebody, if you, uh, heaven forbid, had died today and you go to heaven and God says to you, why should I allow you into my heaven? What would you say? A lot of people would say stuff like, well, I was good. You know, I wasn't as bad as those other people. Stuff like that. But, you know, God doesn't grade on the curve. No, he creates on the cross. There's only one way that you're going to get into heaven. And that is because of the cross of Christ. That sacrifice that he made for your sin. Not only for my sin and your sin, but for the, the sins of the whole world. All the sin of the whole world was that sacrifice was good enough to cover all sin. Let's see, where am I? Okay, I wanted to look at uh, Matthew chapter 24. Starting with verse 36. It says, the day and the hour is unknown. We don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know when when the, the end is going to happen, when it's going to be too late. 
for people to accept the sacrifice that was made. It says, no one knows about the day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father, as it was in the days of Noah. Now this is Jesus saying this. So it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field and one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with the band mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. That, oh, yeah. Well, you don't know what day the Lord will come. So we don't know what day that's going to happen, you know, but as as it was with Noah, and it says as it was in the days of Noah, and and um, we we can see that now nowadays things are are kind of like they were back in those days. People eating and drinking, being merry, doing their own thing, you know, as as it said, as it said in in um, in Genesis about that it grieved God's heart because every intent of, of, of man's heart was evil continually. They, they were, they were not God fearing people. They didn't, they didn't, um, they didn't honor God with their lives back then. And that's pretty much what's going on in this world these days. Just look at the news or, or go down to the beach with me tomorrow. You'll see. People are not living God-honoring lives. And it's grieving God's heart. So we have no idea when that day is going to come. And it's going to be too late for those people who have not, have not um, had put their faith in Christ and believed that he was accepted that uh, sacrifice of him on the cross as their very own for, for the forgiveness of their sin personally. Now, now, like it was uh, back in those days of, with Noah, the only way any anybody was to survive the flood was if they got in the ark. They got on board that ark. There was only eight people out of all the people of the world. They don't know how many people were on the earth at that time. From what I heard, there could have been as many as a billion people on the earth at that time. Who knows how advanced they were with their technology back then. But the thing is, is the only way anybody was going to survive, there was only eight of eight people of the whole world that survived. They had to be on board that ark. When, and then now we, we had talked earlier about how the next time it's going to be by fire. That the destruction is going to come upon the earth by fire. But God has made a way out for that too. Just like being on board that ark, he has made a way for us to get on board with him, to be in Christ. And what does it mean to be in Christ? It means that we, we come into a relationship with him. We turn towards him, turn our lives over towards him. We need to be in Christ. We get on board with him. Repent of our ways and turn towards God. It's not God's desire that wicked men should perish but that all would come to repentance. So what do we need to do? Let me see. I, I'm going to read from uh, John chapter 15. This is the vine and the branches. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even, bear even more, be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. 
If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. And so that's what we need to be, is to be in Christ, is to be his disciples, to, to learn from him, from his word, learn from the Bible, these things. That is to be in Christ. You want to be in Christ because when the next the next time comes along, when, when we are done with this, as we are learning in uh, 2 Corinthians, when, when our time to, to um, vacate this tent that we are living in, this body of ours, we need to be found in Christ. And when, when that time comes that we do go before him and he says, why should I allow you in? We'll be able to say, I was in Christ. I accepted that sacrifice as, as my very own. And he knows, he knows what's going on. He knows our heart and he knows if, if we have been um, a true follower or not. So I would pray for you that you would give your life to Christ and become a follower, a disciple of Christ and be found in Christ. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the, the study, Lord. And the, the worship for this evening. I'm, I'm so thankful, Lord, that I can be a part of this. Blessings for Red and his uh, ministry. And for all the people that took part in, in uh, this evening, Lord, and for their their uh, ministries also, Lord. I want to pray for the um, the people that don't know you, if, they, if they've heard this message, that they will understand that they need to be found in you, that they come to faith because of your love for them, Lord. They need to know that you love them, that you made a way out for them to be found in you, to enter in your love, Lord. We, we love you, we praise you, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Casey. Oh, yeah, I, I really like that. I read, put that on Facebook too. I really like the phrase, Jesus doesn't grade on the curve. He grades on the cross. Like, yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> but thank you, thank you for bringing us that outreach message. And we still have one more person. 